Is the Zion Ukraine Plus still a usable gimbal in 2019? Is it? Well, let's find out. So look, if you're wondering why I like changed my entire outfit, it's because I shot that previous intro about a week ago and I looked over the footage and I was like, you know what? I gotta redo all of that. So I'm back now. I just finished editing down the music video. You guys will be seeing that here really soon. So be on the lookout for that. But let's get right into what I want to talk about for this video. Man, I just really cannot believe it has been two years since I purchased this gimbal. Like this thing got so much, ooh, this thing got so much work and I really, really enjoy using it. And if I didn't upgrade to the Rona M, I will most certainly still be using this with my projects and on my music videos. If you guys did not see that I recently went out to Paris and I shot an entire birthday video on this when I was out in Paris and in the other scenes also I shot on my slider. But for the majority of the shoot, everything was shot on this gimbal right here. And I shot that like two weeks ago. So 2019 is this gimbal still usable. Uh, let's just talk about some of the pros and cons before I can make that final judgment on this product. So let's get right into it. All right, so first up on the pros, we got this Zion Ukraine Plus has a payload of about five and a half pounds. That may not seem like a lot, but in now in this day and age, with all of these new mirrorless cameras, this is a really good, pretty much standard payload for most pistol grip gimbals. So I know like there are gimbals like the Ronin S, which can hold bigger cameras, say like the 1DX Mark II, but for most people, I think are really going into like the mirrorless feel when it comes to bloggers and all that stuff. So if you have a lighter setup for say like what I used when I first had this was the A6000 along with the 180105. This was pretty much my standard go-to, actually my only go-to setup for any type of work that I did, whether it was any just a regular video or music video. I think I shot maybe two music videos on this and also counting three, the birthday shoot that I shot with this. And then all the other work that I shot, like all the small skits and stuff that I did. So if you're any type of filmmaker or creator that has like any type of small, I would say a lighter setup, then I think this is a suitable gimbal for you so also on top of the five and a half payload the actual gimbal itself is pretty light man it's not that much going on it's really really lightweight it even includes a little stand on the bottom like i think the actual weight of it is around five or six pounds so even with the max out payload with this you want to get around 10 to 11 pounds so that's still really light compared to say to the Ronin M, which is significantly a lot heavier. It's not super heavy. This gimbal isn't really heavy, but compared to this pistol grip gimbal, it is a lot heavier than this. So if you're the person that doesn't want to carry around a bigger gimbal like this, this Zion Crane Plus would be the route for you to go. Honestly, man, any pistol grip gimbal um, within this weight range. So with the five and a half pound payload and the lightweight of the actual gimbal itself, you can get this on Amazon for around 339 USD dollars. That is definitely a lot cheaper than what I've seen now with the newer gimbal. It's like say the Ronin S, I think that's around maybe seven, six or 700 bucks. You got the Zion Crane 2, which is a lot bigger and a lot heavier. That's definitely a lot more expensive than this. So if you're on a budget, 
any type of pistol grip gimbal within that price range, this is a suitable purchase for you. Yo, man, this thing even comes with a freaking like pelican like case. Like you can't beat that. This thing is so clutch, man. Like I love the snaps on it. It's like so perfect for me. It's got all these small pockets in there. I still kept the little Zion thing that it came with. But yeah, man, it's got the foam on top, the foam padding on top, and the foam inside with the little inserts to put like the actual pieces of the gimbal itself. So this right here was a really, really good plus for me when I was traveling or just storing the gimbal when I wasn't using it. So having this case, hard case, I want to say it may be waterproof. I'm not sure on that, but even if it's not waterproof, I think it, I don't know, man, it's like a Pelican light case. So it gets a job done. It keeps your gimbal secure, keeps it nice and cool. So if you're on the go, if you're on the run, traveling, this is a great accessory to have along with its gimbal. Yo, this may seem like the smallest thing ever, but having this list right here to like actually go down and know what I want to talk about is like game changers for me, man. Before I started doing this, I would like just sit here and like, man, what I'm gonna talk about now. But knowing what I want to talk about before I even do this shoot makes it a lot easier and having it in list format like I have right here. You probably can't see it, but um, just listing everything out that I want to talk about, like the key points, is really game changer for me. So if you struggle with like knowing what to talk about. Try the method of writing out your task or your key points and just move on from there. It makes the flow of your videos a lot easier. And when it comes down to editing, your clips aren't super, super long. I think I cut my notes maybe 20, 25 minutes a clip. That's still long, but I know like based off what I wrote down, I know what order I talked about. So it makes it a lot easier to edit and process. So trust me, it's a game changer. All right, so looking at my list, I see that we have next on here is the ease of use of the menu system. So on this, you guys can see that it has a joystick right here where you can move the gimbal up and down. It's super, super simple. And you have the mode button right here. And also you have the power button. And if you want to connect like a, any type of cord to the actual gimbal itself, you can either zoom in or out depending on what type of lens you have and the type of camera, if it's compatible with the actual gimbal itself. So if you want to change the mode that you're in, all you do is simply press the mode button right here and then you just go from there. So I believe it's three total modes on this thing. So say, I mean, I think it's in a follow mode now. So I just press this once and now it is in the mode where it's pretty much stays in the same position. So this thing's not going anywhere, man. See that? And it see like it glitches out on you. You want to get it back to the center. You just double tap this. And it gets right back to the center position. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward when switching modes. So if you wanted to switch to the selfie mode, all you do is triple press the mode button and it'll do a full 360 where the camera is facing you. So let's try it out. See, check it out, too easy. So if you wanted to vlog with the gimbal, you could, but I personally wouldn't recommend it. It's not heavy, like I said, but if you're holding it with one hand, it can become heavy. So I like using my Gorilla Pie. It's nice, lightweight, super simple, man. You don't have to worry about any batteries or any motors or nothing like that. So if you wanted to vlog on it, you can. I'm saying maybe go a different route. That's just my opinion. But if you want to do it, by all means, do as you please. But my recommendation is to try something else besides the gimbal when it comes to vlogging, like face camera itself. But that's pretty much it when it comes to changing throughout the modes of the gimbal. So my only gripe about this, when it comes to switching the modes, there is no indicator or no LED screen to know what mode you're in. Now you know it's changing modes when you click it, but you really don't know the exact mode that you're in until you actually click it, play with it around and actually understand the mode that you're in. So that brings up my first con when it comes to this Zion Crank Plus. And that's really like a personal preference. Like it's not a big deal, but for me, I kind of want to know. But even then, like with the Ronin M, there's still no indicator of like the mode I'm in. So I still struggle with that. But I know like the modes on the Ronin M like day and night because I use that so many times. But when I first got this, I wish that there was some type of LED indicator or something that will let me know the type of mode that I'm in. That's just a personal gripe for me. Not really a big deal for a lot of people, but for me, that's that's just something that I wish I did had on here. And there there may be some type of, you know, thumb controller like the Ronin M has 
that you can attach to this, um, but I haven't looked into that. So if there is and I find it, I will be sure to link that down in the description so you guys can check that out. The next con for me would be the positioning of the actual camera itself. So you guys can see how we got the bottom of the gimbal right here. I hold it right here. The positioning of this is just too high. And again, this is like another personal preference. This is the main reason why I wanted to switch from this gimbal to the Ronin M. You guys can see how the actual camera position is a lot lower and that's just what I like. And I can have the, the handles right here. It's just more natural for me to have the lower positioning compared to it sitting super high on the Crane Plus. Again, this is a personal preference on how I want my camera positioning to be. I prefer it to be lower. And I know that on these pistol grip gimbals, you can put it in underslung mode. Getting in underslung mode is just such a hassle for me. It's just weird, man. You have to like hold this and then go like that. And it, it, may, it may glitch out on you. So just be careful about that. You look at the menu system, everything is like basically reversed. So if I want it to go up or go down, it's the opposite of that. And it's sometimes weird. I know you can put it in this position like that, but I don't think that this is a natural position for this gimbal. And also with a lot of pistol grip gimbals. And I know some people can either get over it or some people like it, but for me, I personally didn't like it compared to my Ronin where it's already in that natural lower position. So everything works out just fine. And also another key note, when you're in this lower underslung position, I believe that the motors work a lot harder than in the regular upright position, mainly due to the fact that I don't think that underslung mode, again, is a natural position for these pistol grip gimbals. You can most certainly do the underslung mode if you want to, but just be aware that you may experience a lot more micro jitters in your footage um, compared to having this natural upright position the way it's supposed to be designed for. All right, man, so we had about like four or five pros and three cons. And those cons were like mainly personal preferences and just small gripes that I didn't like about it. But for the main user, I don't think that those cons are gonna be big deals. And I think that these really aren't big deals. It's just, you have to find out what you like. And I found out I can get away with those small gripes with this pistol grip gimbal on the Ronin. So that's what led me to upgrading to the Ronin M. There is absolutely nothing wrong with this gimbal. So is the Zion Ukraine Plus still usable in 2019? Absolutely, 100% yes. This thing will get you some smooth shots, man. I'm telling you, I just used this in Paris pretty much from my entire time out in Paris for that birthday shoot. So I got a lot of good crispy clean shots, man. I had no complaints about it. Like it's small, lightweight. It held my payload for what my setup was and it just got the job done. So like I said, if you are a filmmaker with a light setup on a budget and looking for something with an easy use system, the Zion Crane Plus is one of the systems to go with. So I am looking forward to giving this thing away to a good friend of mine, man, Brian Johnson, AKA B. Such a good dude, man. So like this man has really been there from the start when it comes to my filmmaking career. And I want to be able to give back to him because he's always been there for me. And I have a lot of extra gear laying around that I don't use as often as I used to. So now here we are. I wanted to make a video about this before I gave it away. I'm just looking forward to see what Brian can create with this gimbal, man. So I'm not just giving him the gimbal, I'm also giving him the dual handle grip, which I purchased because I wanted to have that Ronin-like experience with the Zion Crank Plus. Um, so yeah, he's gonna get this, the monitor mount, and a seven inch A7S monitor. This was my very first monitor. Um, I'm not gonna include this in the price I'm selling like all this stuff for because one, I don't have the HDMI cable for it and I don't have any extra batteries to give. So this would just be an addition to the package of what I'm giving Brian. I wouldn't say this is the best monitor. You can probably find either smaller or just the same size monitors, maybe around the same price but it definitely got the job done for me. And it's a really great help when it comes to being out in the field and having a bigger image. So I know that this is gonna come in handy on any shoots that he's going on. So yeah, it's gonna get this too. Oh yeah, man, you can't forget about the case. The case is coming with it as well. So yeah, 
everything is in it. If you guys can do me one big solid, go follow my boy Brian right now on Instagram at nonbiased. Go check out his page, drop him a few likes and some comments, and I'm sure he will return a favor to you guys as well. Also, if you guys can go check him out on Facebook, he has a Facebook page called Nonbiased Live from the Bat Cave. And looking at his bio, it says live podcast discussing hot topics, free promotions, prizes, and more. The new rap city in the basement, Nonbiased Live from the Bat Cave. And I know he goes live on Facebook on this page. I think I want to say around eight o'clock, seven o'clock. This is German time. I'm in Germany. So if you're in Germany, I want to say around seven or eight o'clock. I know he will usually make a post about going live before he actually goes live. So just be on the lookout for that. You know, you guys can like the page, also share it to your friends as well. Like I said, he's a really, really good dude. He's a really good friend of mine. He's always helped me when I needed help. So yeah, man, just hook my boy up, follow him on Instagram and also Facebook. That would mean a lot to me and I'm sure it would mean a lot to him so if you guys can just do that solid that would be greatly appreciated yo <laughs> I, think I, I think i killed that yeah i think i killed it all right yo guys all right before i get about here if you guys do not follow me on instagram go follow me right now at vizway media i post some really good consistent content and you guys can go check out my page like comment and i will return the favor to your page as well if you guys enjoyed this video man slap that like button but on a more serious note this channel is closing in on 100 subscribers so if you're new here man consider subscribing and i will see you guys in the next video Peace out, guys. Tommy die? Huge, dude. You huge. Yo, I never ever like do a video without a hat or a do-rag on. So I know y'all probably be like, this man is bald. I got a bald. Let me wait check myself real quick. Y'all ain't ready for this dog. Your boy be spinning, dude. Come on, man. Stop playing with him, T. Ooh. Y'all ain't think I had no ways. Hold up. It's a scary sight, T-Fizz, scary sight, get him out of here.